Biparital diameter is one of the basic biometric parameters used to assess fetal size. Biparental diameter, together with head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length, are computed to produce an estimate of fetal weight. In the second trimester this may be extrapolated to an estimate of gestational age and an estimated due date, EDD. Biparital diameter in fetus has been reported to correlate well with gestational age. Biparental diameter, aside being used to estimate gestational age, fetal growth, is also helpful in the detection of fetal abnormalities. The biparental diameter remains the standard against which other parameters of gestational age assessment are compared. The anatomical landmarks used to ensure the accuracy and reproducibility of the measurement include 1. A midline falx. The falx cerebri is a large, sickle-shaped infolding of the inner meningeal layer of the dura mater and lies in the midline of the skull. 2. The thalami symmetrically positioned on either side of the falx. 3. Visualization of the septum pellucidum at one-third the front occipital distance. That is, at each examination, biparental diameter images were acquired in the transthalamic plane, where the landmarks consist of the cavum septum pellucidum, thalami and absence of the cerebellum. Measurement technique. The biparental diameter should be measured on an axial plane that traverses the thalami and cavum septum pellucidum. The transducer must be perpendicular to the central axis of the head, and thus the hemispheres and calvaria should appear symmetric. The calipers should be placed at the 1. Outer edge of the near calvarial wall. 2. Inner edge of the far calvarial wall. The cerebellar hemispheres should not be in the plane of the image. A wrong measurement plane can produce errors up to 20 mm. The biparental diameter measurement is obtained from outer skull bone to inner skull bone, leading edge to leading edge, perpendicular to the falx at the maximum diameter. A leading edge to leading edge measurement or a middle to middle measurement are both acceptable. The biparental diameter should be measured as early as possible after 13 weeks for dating. Interpretation. Biparental diameter has been shown to be accurate in predicting gestational age from 14 to 20 weeks. The variability increases after this time. Biparental diameter may also be influenced by factors such as abnormalities of head shape, breech presentation, or multiple gestations. Head circumference may be a more reliable measurement if there is variant head shape. If your baby's biparental diameter measurement is larger than expected, it could signal that a health issue, such as gestational diabetes. A low biparental diameter can be an indication to monitor fetal head growth. Microcephaly can be a concern for women who may have been exposed to the Zika virus. Also considered as macrocephaly. The biparental diameter can be smaller, and sometimes much smaller than is expected, in fetuses with flatter heads. If the head really looks flat on the scan, check the head circumference and record the findings. If the value is within the normal range, then most likely the discrepancy is due to a flat head. Monitor the growth of the fetal head with the circumference from then on. The Saplelic index will also be useful. If the value is below 74, the head is considered excessively flat. In cases of microcephalics, the biparental diameter is usually at least two standard deviation below the mean. Is biparental diameter accurate during the third trimester? The biparental diameter in third trimester is not reliable and be useless when the patient passes 30 weeks. In those cases, the biparental diameter has to be side with other measurements when we take it in later trimesters to emphasize the normal growth of fetus and avoid wrong measurement of ultrasound. The biparental diameter is useful for dating a pregnancy and in estimating intrauterine fetal weight in weight equation. The latter has the advantage that all three measurements, biparental diameter, head circumference and ventricular atrium, can be taken in the same section. The calipers should be placed at the widest part of the skull, perpendicular to the midline echo. Other than that, its value is limited and can sometimes be misleading in the assessment of growth in the fetus if it is the sole measurement taken for interpretation. Thanks. Dedicated to God Almighty. Subscribe for more.